Ladies and gentlemen, this is Carmine Sabia for Explain America, and it looks like the Trump case is done, and he is going on to victory. Before we get started, please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Those little things really help us out, and they help our channel continue to grow. Michael Cohen was basically caught again committing perjury on Thursday, although I can't say that definitively or legally. That's going to be up for lawyers, judges, and juries to decide. But essentially what he wants you to believe is that he had a 96-second call with somebody very close to Trump about a 14-year-old prank caller that was calling him. In that time, he wants you to believe that the phone was then handed to Trump. He detailed the Stormy Daniels alleged hush money payments, got Trump to agree to it and agree to pay him back, and hung up the phone within 96 seconds. Also, the text messages leading to that call had no mention of Stormy Daniels or any kind of payments. It was all about the 14-year-old prank caller. It's to a point where even analysts on networks that disagree with Trump most of the time are saying this case is done, and I tend to agree with them. I want you to watch this video, though, and let me know what you think when you like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm Carmine Sabia for Explain America. We love you guys. God bless you. Take care, everybody. Randy, okay, Randy, thank you for waiting. Your turn now. Recoverable for the prosecution? No. Can I stop there or do you want me to keep going? You it, can it elaborate. Is, You've earned the right to elaborate. Michael Cohen, thank you. Michael Cohen had one job to do, and that was to put Donald Trump in the room and to have jo Donald Trump part of the conversation concerning the making of false entries in the books and records of the Trump organization in order to influence the election. False entries of the misdemeanor elevated to a felony because it's in furtherance of another crime, which is election, interf election interference, election fraud. He had one job to do, and he couldn't do it on something so simple. Tell us about a conversation. And the worst part of it is on direct. He sounded so convincing. He sounded so smooth, so good. It was such a good day for the prosecution. Describes the conversation and then completely shoots the pooch where it looks like that conversation absolutely, actually never happened. Done. I will say this, as someone who spends a lot of time with these transcripts as night, as part of my side hustle here, that conversation right there was actually only one of several conversations that Michael Cohen te uh, testified to. It was the shortest one, and it was the least perhaps important in telling the story about how, according to Michael Cohen, Donald Trump approved of the payments that Stormy Daniels knew about how they were organized and whatnot. That call was on October 24th. On October 26th, Michael Cohen testified in great detail about a longer conversation he had with Trump where he talked about actually setting up the bank account. So does that no longer matter, that testimony, Randy? Walsus in unum. I think that's the fancy Latin phrase which for the rest of us means if you lied about one thing, I don't have to believe another thing that you say, and that is exactly what the judge will instruct the jury. If you find anything that a witness said to be untrue, to be incredible, to be a lie, feel free to disregard the entirety of that witness's testimony. Once you brought up Latin, there's nowhere else to go. Uh, Randy Zellin, we do appreciate your time this morning. Jennifer Rogers, thanks to you again.